Now, for your celebration, for Kwanzaa celebration, uh, which is December 27th, yes. how can people find out more about it and plan to participate? What are your contact numbers and emails and websites, etc.? They can contact Councilman Gray at 216-382-0218 um, or they can email me at Ruth, R-U-T-H-I Gray at sbcglobal.net. Okay. So it's all one word, Ruth and we, I Gray. And we will have that on the, the crawl on the screen okay. so that everybody can and see And you it. can also contact me at 216-321-1539 or email me at javakequ at aol.com. That's javakeqaol.com. And Keisha, what's and your contact? You, when you contact Ruth and you contact Pat McMillan, you can Automatically. also get me. But I also have a website, which is klmcreations.com. So if you go on to my website at klmcreations.com, you will be able to contact me as well as to see some of the materials I promote. And speaking of promoting your uh, book, the Macmillan Family Kwanzaa Celebration Guide, it's a how-to book uh, yes, on is. how to enjoy this season. Is this book available for, to the public? Can people purchase this book, go online, yes. go, to, go to the website? They can go to Would the you? website and mm -hmm. they can make the purchase or they can ask um, when they call at the 216-321-1539. Some of the publications are in the bookstores, mm -hmm. Borders, okay. um, up at Severance was also carrying the book. So it is available in different segments, and they're also at the libraries. Sounds excellent. Sounds wonderful. So we want to encourage everybody uh, to take advantage of this opportunity to uh, celebrate, learn more about Kwanzaa, and perhaps celebrate it at some level. Now, before we close for... Um, this segment of the new you for a new life was what you're all about here. How, tell me, how did your organization get the name Extended Families? What, uh, what is the background on creating your organization and coming up with Extended Families? Well, most of the women actually are raising their children or someone, other family member's child. Mm -hmm. And what we recognized is that in the past, the extended family was the core to keep some of the devastating things from happening um, within the families. Um, the extended family was the group that was able to help support, nurture, and help families move along. So as an extension of the community, we became the extended family. And all of the women, as I indicated, it's about 10 founders and all of them were raising other people's children as well as their own um, it, because of the needs that was met by their family. So that's why we call ourselves the extended family. Okay. And speaking of extended, oh, I speak English, extended family, <laughs> uh, we've almost become like family because we met through an organization uh, that we all were involved in called Connecting Circles, which was sponsored by Neighborhood Connections, through which we got funding for our programs, you for your extended family project, yes. and we for our uh, New You for New Life community, video-based community service project to help people with their um, interpersonal uh, communication skills and career development skills, a variety of things to help folks live their lives on a higher level. So we met this summer. We went through, well, spring. Actually, it started yeah, this yes. spring. And we met, uh, a ses these sessions were run by Janice Small and Pam Fine, and they helped us in terms of leadership development, organizational development, all the things to help our organizations, which are classified as grassroots by the, by the program, help us be stronger in what we do as organizations. How, as I said, how to develop you know, our own leadership, how to do basic things like fundraising and marketing, just a whole lot of things that apply to not only our organizations, but you know, to corporate level groups, because I've been in those kinds of sessions. And uh, so we're real appreciative that not only did we learn a lot to help us be stronger, 
but we got to meet such wonderful folks yes. who are members of the Connecting Circles family. Yes. So as we close, Gary, do you have anything for a question to close out or comment or observation? Well, I was thinking uh, back to the early point of the interview when you mentioned that the Extended Families program has been around since uh, 2005. Yes. With uh, four years now for you to look back on, has that given you an opportunity to be able to get some grasp on the impact that what you've been doing has had on the community and to be able to judge what you want to use, what you may want to change in the future to have a stronger impact within the community and have people come to you and suggested things that you might want to do to serve their needs better? Well, every time you do one event, you learn from it. And over the years, we have learned a lot. We've learned um, about how to organize a little bit more effectively. We recognize the importance of collaborating with other organizations that are like mind. And we also have learned that um, people will come if they recognize that you have a service to offer them. So you offer them something. You go out and we knock on doors in order to let people know that we are here for them. And it, it actually works. We've had some great impact on both the, the boys as well as the girls who come to the programs. And uh, the more consistent we are in the locations we're at, the more they come back looking for us and asking for more programming. Mm -hmm. So now they come to find us. And that must be a rewarding feeling when they are seeking you out. You know that what you've done up to this point is having an impact and they come to you and ask for yes. additional services. Yes, yes. And the thing that we need is more sponsors to help support what we are doing. And we have had sponsors in the community. University Hospital has helped us in, in uh, a variety of ways. And some other sponsors that um, have come to assist us. So we just need more people out there doing things, letting the kids know that we love them and are here for them and have an open heart and an ear to listen. Um, I'm a child and family therapist and I see the importance of the group and the impact that they have on their individual families as well as the community. Yeah, well, we could talk to them for a very long time, but unfortunately time is about up. And we want to thank our guests for this evening's uh, edition of A New You for a New Life, which is part of our Wake Up and Live with the Arts, because in some ways what you do is a form of art as well. And we didn't get a chance to talk about your Parade on the Circle summer project, which is definitely all performing arts and, and, and not, I don't want to say crafts, but uh, things that are creative. So you fit right in with everything. So Ruth Gray, it was delightful meeting you. Wish you much, thank you, much success on your uh, community service and may you have a joyful Kwanzaa celebration at the South Euclid Community Center mm -hmm. on Victory Drive in South Euclid. Victory Drive is off of what Main Street? Uh, Mayfield. Off of it's Mayfield. It's right behind Giant Eagle. Um, in Mayfield and Victory, Giant Eagles, right there. That's near Green Road yes, it's, intersection. Yes, near Green and okay. Mayfield, yes. All right, so that may be, makes it a little easier for people to find you in addition to calling you and emailing you. So Pat McMillan and Keisha McMillan, thanks for all your fabulous work. And we'll see each other again real soon. Well, Thank you. Don't you go away because we are getting ready to meet two of Cleveland's prolific uh, performing arts talent. Abdullah Bay will be up next and after him Mike Oatman. You're going to stay tuned and find out about what these guys are doing uh, to help make Cleveland Theatre oh, a marvelous experience to be had by all.